Good afternoon and welcome to this afternoon session of Horizon Summit from produced by San Francisco 49ers and Sport Techie. Uh, I'm Joe Lemire, one of the, the writers at Sport Techie and, and pleased to introduce our, our next panel, Digitizing Nascent Parking Data, powered by Park Hub. We have the CEO and founder of Park Hub, George Baker, who founded the company in 2010. And we have Christian Lau, the Chief Technology Officer of LAFC. Um, and I uh, will kick it over to them. And when I remove this screen, you'll see larger videos of them and can choose whether you prefer George's uh, Park Hub matching um, pocket square or Christian's Iron Maiden soccer jersey. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll kick it over to the, the chat for uh, a vote. <laughs> well, well, thank thank you, Joe. Um, appreciate it. But but look, real quick, let me do show off the 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 park hub with the matching pocket square. Christian, if you will, go ahead and uh, let let the audience uh, see see your fine fine attire. Boom. So in the green room, guys, I already admitted defeat, but I'll let you guys uh, 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 let us know. Um, but um, again, uh, I'm George Baker, founder, chairman, CEO of Park Hub, uh, the leading provider for event and parking technology. Uh, I would, uh, before we kind of get into this, I'd really like to quickly thank Taylor Bloom uh, and the entire Sports Techie team. Um, as well as all of the sponsors that have that made this event possible. Um, what an amazing job that they've been able to do uh, and augment the physical interactions uh, of the conference, starting back at the state of the industry uh, earlier this year um, and continuing on here at Horizon Summit. Horizon Summit's historically been one of my, uh, uh, I, I've enjoyed it the most, um, uh, to get out to San Francisco in the last couple of years, it's been at Levi Stadium. Um, so I miss all I miss all of uh, my industry contacts. Um, but you guys, Sports Techie, have done a phenomenal job of um, you know uh, replicating those physical world interactions in a digital manner and make it really um, accretive to to the audience and, and those that are attending and uh, individuals like myself and Christian. Uh, and I am delighted to be joined uh, by uh, Christian Lau, uh, Chief Technology Officer of the Los Angeles Football Club. Uh, thank you so much for joining uh, us today, Christian. Happy to be here. Thanks for the invite, George. Of course. Um, so at Park Hub, uh, we feel so privileged uh, to be working with you and LAFC and forward thinking partners who are always uh, thinking ahead of the game uh, and creating seamless experiences for the fans. Um, while Park Hub specializes in digitizing and streamlining from parking arrival uh, and the arrival experience into the venue, uh, I wanted to kind of broaden that discussion outside of digitizing uh, parking uh, nascent data uh, and, and within this session with you, Christian, uh, and really dig into your, your unique insights on optimizing the entire uh, fan journey. Uh, interested in the tech stack you have developed uh, for the LAFC uh, and the ideas that you are currently evaluating uh, for the future, uh, what is to be known as the new normal. Um, so with that, let's kind of get into it. Um, Christian, uh, as, as you know, our, our team loves working with you, uh, and moreover your approach, uh, you test and you implement some of the most cutting edge, uh, uh, solutions seen out there on the field today. Um, all along, uh, consumer centric, business centric, uh, um, uh, food and beverage, merchandise, uh, access control, uh, uh, really streamlining the fan journey. Uh, so uh, what's your interest in technology and its applications in sports and venues? Yep. Um, yeah, so you know, I, I think I'll start off, I'll, I'll talk about the whole post-pandemic guest experience. That sound good? Sure, um, sure. 
Yeah, so you know, we were, we were working LAFC and, and Bank of California Stadium, we were working on several initiatives to roll out in 2020. Uh, and a lot of those actually align with our post-pandemic guest experience strategy. So if there had to be a silver lining to the pandemic, I think it's the technology that we were bringing to the forefront uh, in the venue, you know, actually makes a lot of sense. And so crowd intelligence is a big deal for us. Uh, one of the partners we just brought on is Armored Things, uh, which will allow us to, to basically understand, um, you know, the flow of traffic, the number of people in the various spaces within the stadium. So we can, you know, align uh, our security staff um, with, you know, the physical, physical distancing requirements that will be required uh, in the venue. And then there's a bunch of other stuff that we're working through today. Um, you know, we're, we're bringing on a new access control partner very soon. Um, next generation access controls. What we like about it is it gets us to the ability to reopen our venue uh, with an audience, hopefully later this, this year, we're hoping. Um, you know, the MLS announced today that we've got a tournament coming up in Orlando um, in July. So we're real excited about that. That concludes in August. And so we're hoping to get, you know, matches in Bank of California Stadium in August, likely without an audience. But then we're hoping as we get into the autumn timeline um, that we can actually bring people back into the building. And so we're working through that now, um, you know, working on the type of technology that I'm sure a lot of people that are attending this this event right now are aware of, but things around elevated temperature, for exam example, um, also focusing on testing potentially, but that's really going to be dictated by the state and then, you know, the LA County Health um, Group. And so we're waiting to, to, to get more uh, guidance, you know, in, in that regard. Um, but then there's other things that, that we were doing anyway that work perfectly in this post-pandemic era. So uh, biometric ticketing, for example, um, you know, facial recognition ticketing, we rolled out this season and, um, you know, we're two matches in and using it and the uptick in usage was actually getting higher, right? And so we know over time that'll be more of a normal thing. It's an opt-in. So, you know, people will have the option to use their mobile device, uh, you know, Ticketmaster safe ticks or um, clear uh, facial rec recognition ticketing um, with Ticketmaster. And so those are the types of things that, that we're working through today. We also made an announcement uh, yesterday, um, Patriot One is a, is a partner of ours already, and we're working through you know, the specific needs of, of Bank of California Stadium, but now we've also uh, formed what we're calling the Stadium and Event Safety Strategic Alliance. And that's really putting together uh, folks within the sports and entertainment industry, uh, specific to security, as well as various companies that are in the security space. So then we can work on a technology stack together to basically bring, you know, next generation uh, security type systems, you know, into arenas, stadiums, and other types of, you know, live music venues. Yep. So that's coming. Yeah. That, that, that's, that's, that's fantastic. I, I was, I was going to drill into the uh, stadium and event safety strategic alliance. Uh, sure. And, and uh, what further initiatives are you considering um, or have considered to provide even more safe, more secure, um, atmosphere um, at Bank of uh, California Stadium, um, and y is that internal or is that kind of out? They, I think they probably go to be together, both the, the, the consumer as well as how the building functions. Um, but but you know what what measures are you taking to, uh, to to you know the fans? I've seen a lot of different statistics, and I've seen a lot of read a lot of case studies on and when the fan is going to be prepared to come back. Um, so what is it? What is most important to you in your tech stack? Uh, internal building security uh, and, tra and and potential tracing, uh, which then helps the the fan the the, the uh, either up for a, uh, an MLS game or a, a entertainment act to get in, um, or is it uh, to those that are visiting your venue to ensure that they are. Uh, 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 able to get into your venue and not, and not, um, you know, spread the, the, the COVID. Yeah. You know, for us, we're, 
I would tell you that we're, we're probably aligning all of our technology in the same way, um, meaning that there's really not a priority. We, we treat everything with, with the same level of urgency. And so for us, we already know that our fans want to get back in the building. They want to see LAFC matches. It, we're, yeah. we're very aware that, you know, people in Los Angeles, Southern California want live events back, right? And so we, we don't think we're going to have a whole lot of concern there. Um, but where we need to focus our attention really is to make sure that those folks that do come into our building are safe, right? And, and actually safe, not just the idea that they're feeling safe, but we actually have deployed the right technology uh, to allow for, you know, us to, you know, have these events without having to worry that, that we're not taking all the right steps. And so obviously, you know, we work with the state of California, the governor's office, um, you know, our head of strategy works with, with that team as well as the city and county of Los Angeles um, to understand what the new protocols are going to be. Because everything we do is informed by authority, right? Like we're not yeah. off making decisions in a vacuum. And so as we get more guidance, then we have the ability to align that with not only the technology that we're bringing into the building, but also all of the protocols that we develop. Um, but, you know, specific to the technology, I think from the minute you, you know, arrive at the gates to the time that you leave, all the technology around the venue specific to the COVID-19 response, um, uh, we consider to be best of breed, right? And that's everything from the access controls. We're focused heavily on concessions and reimagining concession stands, for example. And so I think uh, mobile ordering for us is going to be a huge deal, which we, we started to do mobile ordering last year. Um, we use uh, Apple Business Chat. Uh, this year, we've actually added um, mobile ordering uh, for concessions uh, in our Venutize app as well. And so we're going to continue to expand that. You know, originally, we were going to go to eight concession stands uh, for mobile ordering. And now it looks like we're going to likely do all of our concession stands. Um, and so that's going to be a big initiative for us. And then we're starting to look at taking, you know, the mobile ordering piece to the next level. And so we're looking at technology that would actually allow us to um, allow customers to start a tab, for example, right? So then they could literally, you know, walk freely through the venue and tap their device. And then they'll just, you know, have a tab as they're going to concession stands or club spaces, those types of things. And then they check out at the end of the night, which is a convenience factor for them. But then it actually reduces our expenses too, right? Because we have one credit card transaction versus, you know, 10 or whatever it might be. Yep, so we're looking yep. at that. And in the interim, obviously, you know, there's specific things that we can do forward looking. I'll tell you that we're focused really hard on next generation point of sale. Um, you know, we're, uh, we're hoping to get clears uh, biometric age verification and payment uh, in stadium this year. We were already going to do it, but now we want to add the facial recognition piece to that. Yep. And then we're even starting to have conversations with the Google ATAP team about Solly, for example, and looking at using uh, touch-free interfaces on point of sale. So you actually use hand gestures versus having to touch anything. So there's a lot of stuff that we're working through now, um, lots of forward looking stuff, but we think over the next 12, 24 months, we'll be able to, to do some of the really cool things that, that I just described. Yeah, yeah. To, to my earliest point, uh, you're, you're just so forward thinking um, and, 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 you know, uh, solution oriented and innovative. And it seems like you're really willing to try uh, um, within reason uh, various technologies uh, all built around kind of the customer journey. Um, and the fan journey. So I, I want to go back to that. And, and, and earlier, you mentioned kind of the fan journey begins, um, it, you know, at your gate access, but uh, I, um, I, I don't necessarily believe that to be the case. If we were to walk through your fan journey from the moment an LAFC fan books a ticket and hopefully parking um, to the game, to the moment they leave the stadium, um, and after, of course, uh, the LAFC, LAFC have defeated their opponent, right? Uh, what interactions uh, in, the dig in that physical world are you digitizing um, uh, along these encounters and what systems are you using? Yeah, so going back, going back to that, you know, everything's digital. Um, and yeah. the, really the customer journey for us starts at home, right? Um, you know, I referenced at Gates that had more to do with the COVID-19 response, but... Okay. Um, 
you know, everything we're doing in app, for example, um, all of our digital ticketing, digital parking passes, roughly, I would say 98% of our parking passes are pre-purchased. So we're not doing a ton of stuff in lots, but you have to keep in mind um, that only about 20% of our guests actually park uh, in our lots, right? Um, in LA, we have an extraordinary number of folks, about 30% of our audience that come in on Metro. Um, so train, bus, Metro bike, et cetera, et cetera. And then we also have uh, rideshare, which is another 20%. And then we have a 20% that park in entrepreneurial lots in the area, right? But they're not, mm -hmm. they're not buying it directly from us. Um, yeah. But yeah, so that entire customer journey, everything's digital. Um, and we only want to make it better, right? So things around the campus, for example, you know, we're, we have a, an agreement with Verizon for 5G. Um, and we really want to light up our campus to allow for things like facial recognition parking, right? So you don't even need a pass anymore. You literally just drive up at your face, you're in, license plate readers, things like that. Um, so we're playing with those types of things. And then we do a lot of music festivals in our venue as well. Yeah, and yeah. so we want to have those types of, of, you know, that capability without having to bring in a temporary network um, to have that type of connectivity as well. So there's a bunch of stuff we're doing in the venue and out of the venue. Um, very, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And, and uh, um, I know this, I, I, I don't know if the audience knows this. You, you have been part of uh, the Bank of California Stadium uh, team since it broke ground. Uh, and you were part of building out uh, the, the, the tech stack from the beginning. Um, yeah. And I feel like that, that um, because uh, you were so innovative in the beginning, uh, you really, as we have moved through this pandemic and, 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 and uh, you know, a lot of operations are scrambling on how, how um, you know, uh, how, how can they get into contactless, touchless. Uh, I remember you, uh, a conversation about a year ago, you and I talking, and, and, I, and it was some crazy, uh, I, I, I want to say high 70% Apple uh, pay adoption for contactless payments. Um, but, but my, 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 not well, but it's a, it was high. If I recall, it was like blew my mind, but, but I guess, uh, my, my, my real question is, is, uh, what were some of the issues you initially faced, uh, at, at when you were bringing, uh, uh, bank of California stadium, uh, you know, opening day, day one, um, or, or maybe that first season, um, and you, you, you thought you chose the right technologies or maybe you iterated on technologies and it will, or, or maybe you, you, uh, the, the gap analysis there, you missed some technologies and you brought some in. Yeah. So real quick on the Apple pay, just cause we are really proud of that. So at concessions about 20%, uh, 26% of all transactions are Apple pay, um, That's for merchandise amazing. retail is about 34%. So yeah, our Apple pay usage, contactless payments are, are, uh, you know, pretty, pretty phenomenal. Um, yeah. yeah, you know, so it was, it's funny. So I came on board, um, we had broken ground and had started initial stadium construction. You know, I showed up in May of 2017 and, you know, they, you know, LAFC as an organization had hired IBM um, to do the Wi-Fi network and IPTV and our, you know, our GPON basically, so our network. Um, beyond that, they didn't really, you know, get down the road on anything. And so I showed up and it was a really, it was a cool blue ocean opportunity um, to just figure it out. That was basically what I was told is we know we need technology. We just don't know what that means. So figure it out. <laughs> and my background wasn't from, from sport. So it actually, it, it all worked out really well. Um, but yeah, so, you know, we, we implemented all the technology that you would need to open a, a stadium. And then, uh, you know, knowing that it wasn't going to be a set and forget type thing, right? Some technology you put in the stadium and it's done. Like you, you're good to go for a few years. Other things, you know, obviously we need to iterate and we need to work through it. And so that, that's what we've done. I mean, you know, we, we brought on Ticketmaster uh, last season and our second year. Um, and now, you know, obviously, so point of sale, something that we're looking heavily at to, to make changes in 2021. Um, access control. Um, we have a new partner coming on board because they get us to the next level that we, you know, where we need to be um, as far as things like COVID-19 response, but also uh, future proof things such as facial recognition integration with clear, right? So that needs to be something um, 
that is throughout the building. And so we're working on those types of initiatives. Um, and you know, we're never gonna rest on our laurels. In fact, right now we're working heavily on um, a Wi-Fi 6 rollout for 2022. So we already have a benchmark network in the industry um, and, it, and it you know, serves us really well. Um, but you know, we wanna get to the next level and future-proof that venue, right? Just because we have a ton of events there network is always top of mind for all of our partners and so that's that's coming uh, things like that very good so w w when you are um evaluating considering new technologies um uh, how do you vet and test these po the, the the possibilities uh and you know uh, you know and deviate off of a plan i mean you're very agile you're very you're you're you're, you're um um, so how, how do you, I guess, get yeah, to the piece of, of how, how are you um, beta testing or slowly roll out or, or, or isolating tests for new, new technologies? Um, and then kind of part and parcel to that, uh, what are the opportunities that you see out of the pandemic, just major sports in general and event venues, not just your MLS uh, uh, Bank of California Stadium? Yeah, you know, so to unpack that question a little bit, um, you know, we'll try anything once, right? And so we get a ton of, I mean, listen, I get probably 15, 20 calls a week on new technology or, you know, companies that kind of play in the same space as other companies that we're looking at. Um, and we take a look at a lot of this stuff because, you know, to make a determination on who's best to breed, you really have to understand what all the offerings are. And so I, you know, I, I do work through that quite a bit. Um, we generally have an idea. So we, we do planning every year. And so we, we know where we want to touch. We know the things that we want to achieve in a year when it comes to the technology and the venue, um, which by the way, it, keep in mind that everything that we do is really informed, um, by our customers, right? And so surveying customers and understanding what their needs and wants are really help us, you know, arrive at the technology we're gonna bring into the building. That's one, um, that's, that's a key component to it. And then everything else Absolutely. That we do is all about the guest experience, right? So we don't bring technology into the building for the sake of the technology. It really has to do with the guest experience. Um, is it gonna be an additive experience? Is it gonna reduce friction? Right. So those are the things that we look at. And if, and if we can achieve, you know, those things, then we will proceed. Um, and, you know, there's certain technologies that we'll, we'll test multiple platforms at the same time. Right. And then we'll, we'll draw a yeah. conclusion on it. And then there's some technology that we test in the building that you never hear about. Uh, Cause it's really just trying to understand human behavior, getting things in front of consumers. Sometimes they are aware of it. Sometimes they're not. Um, and then it just helps us figure out, you know, what makes sense, right? So we work with partners and, and prospective partners on that kind of stuff all the time. Love it, yeah. It, it, um, it, it's, I'm looking at the time. I think we've got five minutes left. Um, you and I can keep jamming all day. I know that uh, talking tech and, and fan journey and customer journey and, and digitizing uh, that, uh, the, 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 you know, the, 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 the points throughout the venue, um, you hit on it, knowing who your fan is, uh, before we take questions, uh, uh, again, from an earlier late conversation we've had in the past, uh, you, you're, you, I think you opened up your venue or your venue is, is, is all digital. Um, uh, one of the first, uh, to go digital first to roll out presence, uh, um, and you know very, very rich data around your fans uh, because of the digital ticket, um, and, and you're able to, to uh, in a non-passive way, if I recall, uh, to, to, to gather uh, their, their insights, which then informs your decision on the technology that we kind of just went through in the last hour. But what, what was that, uh, the, the, the uh, adoption rate of the, the digital ticket um, in, in uh, and then you also have like a breakdown. I think Apple was, maybe that's where the Apple ticket was 70% that I recall, but, uh, uh, uh NFC. yeah, NFC, so we were the yeah. first to roll out safe ticks. Um, right. you know, presence has been around for, for, forever in a day. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, safe ticks rollout went really well, all digital tickets. Um, you know, NFC was roughly 70%. 
of, uh, yeah, of our customers amazing. with the NFC pass in their wallet. But you have to keep in mind, 77% um, of all the devices that come into Bank of California Stadium are iOS, right? And then everything else is That's Android. amazing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty crazy. But that's also the demo of Los Angeles, too. So if you actually overlay the two, um, and, you know, Apple and Google will back that up. Like, basically, they know what, yeah. what the demo looks like for, for those devices. Um, yeah. But, yeah, so digital ticking was, has been great for us. And there's a lot of data we get. You know, we have a really solid business intelligence team. Uh, we have a really good practice around that. Um, its own, I mean, it has its own tech stack and ecosystem. Um, but, you know, over time, we've learned that a lot of the technology – um, or a lot of the data uh, that we're pulling, you know, ends up on the cutting room floor, right? Because there's only so much data you need to run your business. And so we've learned yeah. quickly over the last couple of years that we've built that out, that, you know, that's just really the key. Yeah, da 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 cleanly data and, and proper data warehousing uh, is the most important thing. I think a lot of people think, yeah, give me as much data. If you can't make sense of the data, the data is not clean. It's not, not warehouse, right? You, you can't co draw the correlation. So uh, yep. yeah, that's foundational at the beginning and, and sounds like you've done that. Uh, uh, I know you've done that. Um, so awesome. Thank you for your time, Christian. Let's, let's get back to Steve. Uh, uh, I think we've got four minutes left, uh, three minutes left and see if we can hit some of the uh, uh, audience's questions. Most specifically, who's got the better attire? <laughs> <laughs> Don't hate on Maiden. <laughs> Steve, are you there? I think the uh, the winner is uh, Iron Maiden for sure. Yeah. Ah! Thank you. <laughs> Made my day. Uh... Uh, uh, follow up question is where can we snag that Iron Maiden shirt? Oh, this thing came and went, man. We had, uh, I think they did a hundred of each size and that they sold out in about 20 minutes. Um, one of the questions is around, uh, LA football club in doing all their messaging, uh, specifically to COVID, are they going to be doing, uh, language, multi-language support, English and Spanish? Um, and, and what are your plans to, to push that message through social channels and digital? Oh, we've, we've, we've been doing that since the beginning of the pandemic. Um, things are in English and Spanish. Uh, you know, our, our customer engagement has been through the roof, like very solid. We've got great programming with Twitch. Um, you know, we're doing trivia in the Venutize app. We've got, um, you know, podcasts. Uh, that are club sponsored as, as well as some of our fan generated content. Um, you know, I think our engagement is as high now as it ever was, uh, which, which we're really thrilled about. Cool. Cool. We uh, we got 155 uh, still in here. Let's see. Any other questions? Anything else for us, Steve? Um, any last parting thoughts on how event parking will change as a result of the pandemic? Oh yeah, uh, um, change in all in all aspects, uh, both in the event scenario and the transitory commuter space. Um, one parking, uh, uh, I think you, we have seen more change in the last five to eight years than we had in the previous hundred years of parking. Um, parking historically has been a very cash heavy business, um, uh, antiquated, broken, siloed systems. Uh, and you cannot manage, uh, manage what you can't measure. Um, so um, we at Park Hub and others are, um, are providing real-time data analytics uh, it, through uh, endpoints that are uh, accepting payments in a contactless or frictionless manner. What that, what that means is uh, either self-credentialing upon entry uh, or uh, CDC guideline dis safe distancing uh, for authentication. So um, 
uh, Christian, for instance, works with uh, Ticketmaster. They sell as prepaids. Um, uh, pre they have a safe tick. Uh, so the safe tick can be authenticated in two different manners. They've got a rolling barcode, uh, which Park Hub uh, ha um, has an integration into all three of the Ticketmaster databases, uh, our ticks host and the presence. Uh, and so we can authenticate uh, by tapping um, uh, that ticket, as well as uh, literally through an infrared scanner uh, where the patron never has to roll down their window and can show their pass uh, and, and authenticate it that way. So that's kind of the event scenario. Event scenario is less interaction with a parking attendant, likely all removal of cash um, um, and or paper tickets of that nature. Uh, so begin to digitize the nascent parking data. Um, in the commuter transitory space, um, I think we will see, um, um, you know, um, curb, curb parking uh, go away. Um, um, and I think that you will see gate barrier entry. So gate arms also get removed um, and payments will move to text to pay. Payments will move to tap to pay and payments will also move to, um, uh, you know, scan to pay. So basically the onus of the, of the so opening up a web app uh, through some sort of uh, mechanism from the patron to then fulfill their payment, as opposed to going to some uh, hardware machine in which they once pulled a ticket uh, or they had an interaction with a parking attendant in a booth, or they would go to a uh, payment kiosk where you pay by plate or pay by space. Uh, happy to, to discuss all of that. Um, Park Hub does have a booth. We would love to uh, uh, enlighten uh, all of uh, the uh, Horizon Summit uh, um, attendees on uh, how we are playing our part in that future. Thank you for offering that, George. I think there are a number of questions that may have to follow you over to said booth. Um, totally. So I want to thank everyone for the time. Any, awesome. any last thank parting thoughts, Christian or George? No, just thanks for having me today. I thought that was a nice conversation. It's good to see you, George. We'll have to hang out yeah. when we come back to Los Angeles, man. Absolutely. I'll be there by the end of the year. Uh, uh, hopefully sooner than that. So awesome. we will, we will, we will uh, certainly get together. Uh, thank you, Steve. Uh, and then again, thank you, Taylor, for everything that he's done with the, uh, with uh, sports techie. And um, uh, I, I, when I first got the call again uh, from, from, from Taylor back in, I think it was February or March, you know, it was March, early March. And he was moving the state of the industry digital and I was just scratching my set head and I was like, how is this going to work? Uh, but um, I mean, you guys have pulled it off and really been able to curate uh, fantastic uh, attendees as well as, uh, you, you know, um, uh, all, all of the, the content. Um, so th I, I, gotta, I gotta say hats off to Sports Techie and all, all the various sponsors that allow this to happen.